Hi, Zoo Lily fans. I'm Ben, and I'm here today to talk to you, uh, or talk with my friend Chris Fontenot from Cajun Life, and we're going to talk to you a little bit uh, about his products. Yeah, um, thanks. thanks for yeah. having me. Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about Cajun Life and kind of uh, what we're going to do here today? Sure, yeah. So uh, I'm originally from South Louisiana, from Eunice, Louisiana, a little small town in the middle of nowhere. Um, through my corporate job, eventually moved to Oregon, uh, okay. where about five years ago we started uh, Cajun Life. It started really as of, um, because all the friends as we moved, my wife and I moved to North Louisiana, and then from North Louisiana to North Carolina, North Carolina here. And each time we moved, we would cook for uh, all of our new circle of friends. And, and every time we cooked, people were like, you have to sell this stuff. And they're like, dude, you're crazy. We're not going to sell this stuff. Um, so fast forward, we sure. moved to Oregon, and food carts are a big deal here. Absolutely. Um, so we decided, why not launch a food cart? We'll see what happens. We'll test the market. So we did that Friday nights and Saturdays, um, and we had people driving for hours to come get our food. We'd sell out wow. literally every weekend. Um, eventually, that says a lot because there's big food cart there's culture a lot of food down cart. there. Yeah, yeah. About a year after we launched, not quite a year, um, people kept asking us for seasoning or something mm -hmm. they could use at home, um, and we kickstarted and we got a, a um, our first seasoning launched. Eventually grew to four restaurants in the oh, wow. area, uh, two carts and two brick and mortars, um, and expanded our line. So we'll talk about it a little bit today, but we have nine total blends and mixes now. We have even more coming on the way. That's fantastic. Yeah, so about five years we've been doing this now. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I think one of the things I'd like to do today is maybe see a little bit, you know, see some cooking in action. Maybe you can kind of show us yeah, how yeah. we can incorporate We're that spices in. So. I I think we have uh, some mac and cheese that you're going to show us. We're so. going to make a super easy mac and cheese. Actually, That's all, I love super easy. Yeah. yeah. Originated one of the restaurants, became one of our best sellers, and uh, it's very simple, just a few ingredients. Cool. So why don't you walk us through kind yeah. of what the ingredients are and what, what's all needed in this? So what we have is uh, basically a, a third of a stick of butter. Uh, we have two cups of heavy cream. We've got about a cup and a half of Parmesan and two to three tablespoons of the all-purpose seasoning. Okay. Um, you can go heavier than that, depending on how much spice level you like, but usually two to three is, is spot on for what people want from a spice level. Um, we're gonna do it pretty basic today and keep it with just the mac and cheese. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but you can, you can add in whatever you want, for sure. I mean, it's, it's mac and cheese. So you yeah, can it's, you, you can get, you know, I always throw a little bit of broccoli in, I'm kind of a weirdo that way, yeah, yeah. but you know, you can always get, uh, personalize it a little bit, right? You can add, yeah. So one of the things we do, I'm just going to get that melted. Yeah. Um, one of the things uh, we often do is we do a blackened chicken with it. Oh, fantastic. Um, so basically all you need is a little bit of olive oil, um, about the same, about two tablespoons worth of the blackening rub. Just coat it on there, and what you want to do is just a high heat, so a little bit of olive oil and probably super You're really high just heat. like charring the you're outside of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be about two to three minutes per side. Okay. Um, and then I always finish in the oven, or if you're grilling that day, you just fire up the grill. But finish in the oven, of course, make sure you're up to 165 or higher. Uh, I highly recommend everybody to get a digital thermostat, or th a thermometer, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, because with chicken in particular, you, it can dry out. Yes. So if you probe that bad boy, as soon as it hits 165, you're good to go. Popping it out. It's going to be perfectly juicy, nice charred finish to it. Just dice it up, serve it right on top of this, um, and you have like a full-fledged meal at that point. Awesome. Uh, I mean, we're coming into the holiday season, so we're all going to be entertaining, maybe short on time. Um, so you mentioned chicken, but I think we could probably do something like that with a little bit of turkey as well. You too. can, yeah. So one of the things that I do, in fact, I just made it uh, a few days ago, is I use a chicken as well. So like oh, year okay. round. Um, and what I do is you take uh, just basically what we got here. We've got a stick of butter, melt it down. Uh, same thing, about two to three tablespoons of our uh, blackening or the all-purpose rub. Okay. I often combine the two because I like I like to do that. The, Why not? The little flavor combo. Yeah, the flavor there. combo when you combine the two. Uh, just whisk it up, make sure you, you, you know, get it all mixed together. Uh, and then if you have like an injector, um, you'll just want to, you know, just make sure it's mixed, suck it in, um, and then inject it under the skin, uh, just, just right on the skin. Yep. I'm from, I'm Cajun, so I, I, uh, <laughs> like it a little extra spicy. I like a little extra, so I, I put a little more, but then I also inject the meat. So I actually go through a lot nice. more butter yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot more seasoning. Uh, and then to finish it, you take another, another stick of butter. So, you know, really. Throw the butter in there. There's no, no such thing as too much butter. There's you know? not. Same thing. Stick of butter, uh, two, three tablespoons of the all-purpose, and literally just coat the bird on top. And then as, whether turkey or chicken, as it's cooking about every half hour, baste it. Because what's going to happen is all that butter is gonna, and seasoning is going to start coming out. Um, and it's going to make this nice uh, gravy on the bottom of the pan that as you're basting it just keeps enhancing the flavors. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and 
Thanksgiving is all about gravy, right? It's, you got to have a good gravy when you're mixing that up. It's a perfect gravy base. So once it once the bird is done, just take all those drippings, pour it in a, in a, in a pan, add a little bit of flour to it, boil it, and you're going to have a perfect brown gravy every single time. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. Um, and just as a <coughs> reminder, too, uh, you know, we have, as for our Facebook Live viewers today, we actually have uh, these spices on, on sale. You can follow the link that's in the video here. It'll take you to it, get kind of like an advanced um, view of the, com the, the bundles that we have on there. You, you can try some of the various spices. We've talked about a couple of them, but there's how many total uh, different spice packages do you have there? Yeah, we have, um, I think there's about nine right now on oh, the site. Wow. Um, so there's different bundles, everything from just the rubs to just the mixes. Um, if you're like a super seafood person, we've got seafood bundles there. If there's chicken bundles, so you've got the, the two chicken mixes, or the chicken mixes, the chicken rub. Um, the beauty about all these products is they're super easy to use. They're, yeah. they're designed to not mess up. Um, they're complex blends, so you can add, and you're not going to get salt buildup, so they're lower sodium. Um, That's always good. Especially compared to a lot of our competitors who are out mm -hmm. there that are super high. That's basically salt, just all salt. Ours are, are low sodium, but you don't get the buildup. So as you add it, it's just going to get spicier. So if you don't like spicy, just don't add as much. Yeah. <clears throat> but also don't use salt and pepper in addition to. These are designed to be standalone. Just by themselves. By themselves. Okay. Um, we have, uh, turn that down before we burn yeah. our, our, our butter there. Brown our butter. Um, let's just go ahead and add the Parmesan. Um, so basically what will happen is, and the cream. And you see, this is literally all we're going to do. It's that easy. It's, I, simple and easy is great, you know, especially, um, you know, we're coming home from work during the week. It's always tough to, like, think of, like, what are we going to do tonight for dinner, uh, that sort of a combination. So this is super simple fix for that. Super simple. Now, I'm not going to measure it out, but just know it's two to three tablespoons. Okay. Um, you'll just take the all-purpose. You basically just add it in there. Like you said, if we want a spicier, we can add a little bit more. You just add more. more. You don't, or add, if, you, if it's too spicy, you know, you can add less. The thing about, about this recipe is really is it's a base, right? Yeah. So oftentimes, if I want to change things up, and, and even if you check out the site, it shows sort of the alterations of this, the different versions of it. You can start this with a sauteing sausage, so your favorite sausage. I personally love a hot pork sausage. Um, dice it up, saute it in place of the butter, because it's oh, going to make its yeah, own grease. It's going to have, have its own grease. Yeah. Um, once, once it's done, uh, then you just add your ingredients. And the, the same cheese, thing, so the, the cheese, the butter. butter. Yep. yep. Stir it up and serve it with your, your, uh, your noodles. Super easy. Wow, that easy is always good. Um, and again, you know, going back to uh, the holiday season, just short on time. So easy is always a wonderful little trick. Um, you know, if you really are, uh, you know, we're going to show you come some of these uh, little recipes that we're going to do today, incorporating the spices. If you like it, want to share with a friend. Um, remember to you know tag a friend on the video. Uh, let them know what you're seeing today. Kind of learn a little bit more about the product. And it, you never know, there might be a surprise in it, um, uh, it for sharing. Um, so yeah, as we're let a, kind of letting this melt down a little bit, we'll up the heat here and yeah, one kind thing of stir you wanna, this up. One thing you want to be careful with, it is, it is Parmesan, right? So if you turn the heat up too high, it's going to start sticking. So you yes. need to find sort of that medium high okay. to get it melting. Um, and then once you get that, you just basically wait till the cheese is completely melted. Um, and, and we'll show you how to finish it up in just a second. But usually what, what I do is I put the noodles boiling. Like first thing I do, get your, get your water boiling. Kind of prepping them a little prepping, ahead of time. And then once you drop the noodles in the water, start this. Gotcha. Because by the time this is, the noodles are al dente, this is also going to be done. So, you know, noodles take, what, 10 minutes, 8 yep. minutes al dente? 8 to 10 minutes, complete finished meal. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, you know, one of the other things, too, uh, that... I love to do with spice combos and stuff is is side dishes or maybe snacks. Oh, you yeah. know? Um, we're coming into the winter months, it gets a little bit colder. My mu movie viewing um, and sort of streaming video time goes up, I've found. Yeah, yeah. Are there any things that we can do kind of with the spices? Maybe like popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. Yeah. So uh, one of the first things we learned about our seasonings, the all purpose when we launched it, was people use it on popcorn. Um, and of course, I had to try it because sure. yeah, I hadn't done that yet. Absolutely. I, I, I didn't think about popcorn when we designed these. Um, and it is phenomenal. So get your favorite popcorn. If you're doing just like, you know, microwavable popcorn, sure. um, pop toss it, it but in. immediately toss it in because you need yeah, the butter you to want catch it. it. To melt. Yeah, shake, yeah, shake, yeah. shake, 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 shake. Um, and, uh, and then you're good to go. If you're doing it like on the stove, 
Um, what I've learned with that is you need to add it just before they start popping. So when that first kernel pops, That's add your tip. seasoning, and then they'll pop together. Because once they start, they're going to get going they quick. But if you do it before, yeah. you're going to burn the seasoning because that oil gets so hot. Yep. Um, you're going to burn the seasoning. I've tried it many ways. And trust That's me, the, when the first the two, tip. two or three kernels start popping, add the seasoning. I usually do, when you do it that way, I usually do about two... Two tablespoons seems to be like the going rate, right? For all the recipes sure. that I create, um, kind of that, that sort of. Would you say it's that's a really the, good uh, middle ground? It's not mm -hmm. spicy. It's just perfectly blended. Of course, you know if you want it spicy, they're designed to go spicier. Um, but they're really they're really meant for like an everyday household because we know Cajuns on the name. Don't let that scare you. Um, it's they're designed to have the complexities of Cajun food. Uh, and if you want the spiciness, you can get that. You these. really up it. You yeah. just up it, but sure. you don't have to have it. You just It's replacing salt and pepper. All of these are replacing what you would normally have in your cabinet into just five blends, basically. You need nine blends if you count the mixes. That's fantastic. And you can't really screw them up. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> salt and pepper, you can definitely screw up. Um, I've had a number of steaks that had way too much of one or the other. So. Oh, for sure. You know, I can get a little heavy-handed with the, uh, the the black pepper myself, you know. You, you know, can get heavy-handed. Uh, a little bit too much on these, that. These, you know, they're, they're, they've because of the ingredients we have in there, they have sort of an orange tint to them, so it's really easy to see exactly how much you're using. Mm -hmm. um, black pepper on a steak and salt, you, you'd be like, oh, did I season that section <laughs> of the steak? I don't know. Um, these, we were talking about earlier, you know, we, you can coat these, let them sit, um, and let, you know, dry rub kind sure. of thing. Uh, the blackening is phenomenal on a steak. Um, That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, my family has a beef cattle ranch down in New Mexico, and like we good eat meats. a lot of good meat, uh, a lot of good beef, and, um, Dry rubs is definitely the way that, that I, I always do my steak on the grill. Um, just one of my favorite ways to prepare that. Um, yeah, it's, it, the, you know, the, the blackening um, started at the restaurant, so we started doing po' boys, uh, and people wanted oh, a blackened po' boy. Love a good po' um, boy. So one of the things that came of that was a blackening rub, of course, and then we did the fish fry for, sea, for like fried shrimp po' boys. Um, same thing, like, so we talk about the mixes real quick. The mixes. They're like shake, you know, put it, put your meat in a bag mm -hmm. with this stuff and shake, shake, shake and fry. I mean, they're that easy to use. A seafood boil, um, for those who do like full on boils, like if you're in the south, you know what a crawfish boil is. If you're in the yep. northeast, usually you're doing like, um, you know, crabs and, yep. and. Um, we do a lot. I mean, we're in the great northwest here. We, we have a lot of seafood. Of seafood and, you know, we do a lot of the seafood boils as well. Uh, not not quite the same as the not quite down there in the south, but Th this stuff is so good. The, so the seafood boil, you just add it to water, add your meat. You know, we do a lot of shrimp at our house, so mm -hmm. shrimp, um, you just drop it in the water, literally boil it for like you know shrimp. So it takes like two minutes, um, and there'll be this nice red color, super flavorful, um, super delicious. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, and just a reminder to you guys too that the bundles are you know you can follow the link in the video. We have the bundles on site uh, for our Facebook Live viewers in advance of the sale that's going on tomorrow. Um, the bundles started around eight ninety nine. They incorporate, you can get uh, all of one spice if you really like it. If you want to try kind of an assortment, we have those out there for you as well. Um, so make sure that you check out that link and click through. Uh, Kind of see what else is available. Yeah, um, I'm gonna get a little crazy because we have bacon already chopped here, so why yeah, not? Yeah. Right? So sure. one of the things we have here is we have some chopped bacon. I normally finish with it, but because we don't, we're not doing a protein today, we're gonna just just sprinkle a little bit of that, give it a little smoky flavor. The best part about bacon is right that really rich smokiness it's, it's, that you get so to come good. along with it. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> get a little little extra in there. Yeah, and like I said, we you know even adding bacon to it, like I I like blackened chicken, so I would still do a blackened chicken slice it up and, and just serve it on top. We don't have any today, but um, it's so good. so good. So this is pretty much melted. So obviously we have these ready, but um, so these have already been done. These are our al dente noodles So here's here. the beauty of this too, is that with noodles, you can do these ahead of time. So like you mm -hmm. know you're gonna be short on time, cook these ahead of time, put them in the fridge. Yep. And once the sauce, the sauce is hot, right? So it's just gonna add like two minutes to your to your cook time. Um, let's see if I can do this without dropping everything, right? Just literally add it to, so these are, these are basically out of the fridge. They've already cooked them. Yep. Um, and maybe you have a little extra from the night before or something yep. like that. Yeah, if you have, or yeah, if you have a little extra, you're like, what do we do? I, we always have extra noodles at our yes. house because I don't, I never know how much to put in the pot, and I always end up with too much. This we'll is cook a whole you, box, and I'm this like, is oh, something I you can do with that. that. Yep. So literally, just mix it in. Well, it looks so good. You can kind of see the bacon mixing in there. Um, it's so good. Super simple recipe. You know, I, I, um, I'm always looking for a nice little shortcut. 
Well, I do uh, oftentimes bake my mac and cheese as well. Is there yep. like a difference that you would do between the two? Or yeah, like so baking mac and cheese takes a little long. It takes about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, you can actually probably do a version of this. You would, you, uh, I would probably recommend like a white cheddar though in, in that case, yeah. just because it's a slower melt. For um, sure. And, uh, but same basic technique. So you basically just get a, um, you know, a, a nine by 13 pan, mm -hmm. uh, layer of your noodles already cooked. Uh, now, one of my aunts used to just do it not cooked and she'd let it cook. I never could get it right. So I don't recommend that for everybody because I always want to purge your noodles. Her, her she was, secrets, She was right? able to do it. But yeah, you just add your heavy cream, add some white cheddar. Um, you know, for that size, you're probably looking at closer to two cups of, of shredded white cheddar on that one. Okay. Um, and bake it for about an hour, hour and a half. You want, you want, the, you want the, the milk and the cream to, you know, basically cook. Um, once they're cooked and it gets a nice golden brown layer on top, um, just before it's like done, you can add bacon, you can add yep. breadcrumbs. Yep. I add breadcrumbs. Okay. Um, and a little bit of butter, and then finish it off, and it's perfect. You got a nice little, uh, wonderful little side dish here, yeah. you know. Uh, or even a main dish, like you said, with the bar main chicken, dish. You, you, can do you it add main chicken, dish. you add a protein, you know, you can add whatever protein you like. Chick I like chicken, we eat a lot of chicken. Um, chicken, turkey, if you have extra little turkey, you think Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, extra exactly. Turkey. We're going to have a ton of Chop extra it up, turkey. Throw it in here instead of the bacon, or add it with the bacon. It means bacon. <laughs> yeah, you can't go, wrong, can't go with wrong with bacon. So we're gonna call this done. So basically, done, right? So we're just gonna grab a bowl real quick. And we're gonna finish it off. That looks delicious. Now, I'm, I'm not a pretty plating chef kind of guy, <laughs> I just plate, right? One of the things we did in my restaurant, we just, we cooked it, we served it the way I would eat it at home and that doesn't mean it's pretty. We grab a little bacon here. Finish it off. Finish it, bam, that done. Looks delicious. And if you're really adventurous, like a lot of people are, you can just Give us some a little color. Extra pinch. I like. I like a little extra. Finish it off there. Voila! Ten minutes. Oh. I mean, I don't know how long it took us, but we're awesome. Talking. So yeah, we've shown you guys kind of how to do uh, quick and easy mac and cheese with uh, some of our. This was your all-purpose seasoning. This is all-purpose seasoning. Yep. Chef's got to taste stuff right. Oh yeah. Always. Before you serve that out, right? You guys, little extra back here. You guys, you're gonna have to try that. It's good. Let me get this off. <laughs> oh, that's good. I forgot how good it is. Okay, so I think we're also going to do another uh, side for you guys today. We're actually going to do a very southern classic, right? Yeah, um, hush puppies. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about your mixes here. Uh, yeah, so the mixes, like I said, we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. They're pre-seasoned, pre-floured, okay. um, ready to go. All you have to do is um, you know, make sure whatever meat you're using is a little wet, a little damp, um, and get another bowl or a bag, stick them in there, shake them until they're coated. Okay. Um, depending on how much you're doing, like with the chicken, I like to double coat, so I, I use an egg wash you can use an egg wash, uh, and I think we actually recommend it on the directions to do an egg wash and then and then dip it. So basically, a little bit of milk, egg, sure, whisk, uh, stir. But then you just mix. Don't add anything else. If you add anything else, particularly on the chicken, you're going to get it too spicy. Like a lot of people buy these mixes, thinking um, that you need to add you need a little, little add extra. Stuff, yeah. Do not add any more. They'll be perfectly seasoned every single time. Um, if you add more and you're not your your spice adverse, you're going to be in for a little bit of a waiting. Yeah, it's going to wake little you up for sure. Little little kick in the butt there. Yeah. Huh? So we'll do the we're going to do the. Um, uh, the hush puppies here, and, and uh, so these are super easy. You know, hush puppies from scratch can be very complicated. You, you can yeah, screw them I, up pretty easily. I don't know if I've ever successfully made one from scratch, I, to be honest with you. I have, but it added a lot of trial and error. <laughs> um, so basically, just a pouch, right? Uh, this one takes whole a whole package. Whole package. In. This one takes a little bit of prep time, but not too much. You talked about Netflix and earlier and getting your, your binges on. You can do this while watching something, right? Sure. So basically just add it. Uh, you'll add it to, you'll need an egg. So just get an egg. We'll add that in there. Just toss this back here real quick. And um, buttermilk. So you need about a cup and a quarter of buttermilk uh, to go in here. And we're gonna, I do this so I, you know, I'm just gonna, I know roughly how much we're doing here. Yeah. You've made this I made it a few plenty times. of times, I would imagine. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> and then we're gonna get a whisk and literally just whisk, whisk it up, right? You want to make sure everything is nice and Some wet. Blend it, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you can get these little, like little dry pockets, and they don't fry very well. No, they do not. Uh, it's almost like a kind of not quite runny consistency, but almost like a cookie batter kind of. Is a cookie what batter is a really good way to, to look at it. Yep. So you can see right here, um, we have sort of it's you know it's it's thick, but it's cookie batter. That's sure. actually a great way to look at it. Yeah, cookie batter. Um, now here's where you'll have to. Get like get your programming ready. It takes about a half hour because it's dough, so it needs to rise. Yep. Um, so once you get the, you know, you get it mixed, and, and just make sure it's mixed. You don't. There's no over stirring. You, I mean, you can, but you don't. 
you don't need to over stir. You just make sure everything's right. nice and, and moist and wet. Um, I don't like to use that word because a lot of people are, are, don't like that word. <laughs> um, let it sit for half an hour, minimum. You can let it go longer. So okay. if you're like really into something, don't worry. It can sit. Sure, it's just going to rise a little more. Yeah. Eventually, it's going to stop, and you're, you're good to go. Um, you can put it in the fridge as well while you're so doing So you can this. do it overnight you or something like that. You can do it overnight. Like it's going to rise. Um, and then once you're, once the dough is risen, so we had some already risen because obviously yeah, we kind of prepped it a little bit ahead of time. Um, you want to make sure your oil is around 300 degrees. So if you have like a, one of those electric skillets that you can control the temperature, those sure. are perfect for these because you, you can, um, you can set the temperature to 300 and, and just let it go. And just let it go. Um, we're doing it I with use a, cast iron. Yeah, we use know, cast iron. I have a, a wall of cast iron at my house that, that are people think is decoration, but they're active. We like use those pots. <laughs> um, so basically, all you can do. I don't know if we're hot yet here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. do a little test while you talk. So what other kind of mixes you have? Is this the all-purpose that you have mixed here? Is there a different kind of flavors? Yeah, so what are the different? So they're different. So these are pre-designed for their their purposes. So unlike the the all-purpose and the blackening, which are kind of universal, uh, the rubs are very specific. So we have a seafood rub, a chicken rub, and then a mesquite barbecue rub. So obviously Ooh. they have very specific purposes. Yeah. The mesquite barbecue is really good on peanuts, by the way. Or like right now, on pumpkin peanuts. seeds. Oh really? So how do you kind of do that? You mix so, it. So so however you normally roast your pumpkin seeds, just use the, the mesquite barbecue on it and it's gotcha. so good when you bake them you get that you get that sweetness mm -hmm. and that savory mm -hmm. so good um, and then we have the uh, the chicken fry uh, I have a friend uh, that I cooked these when we were in test mode we hadn't launched them yet and we were getting close to the final recipes and tested them he's like dude what is this stuff like I need you to cook more of this and I was like well they're coming soon so it's they're, they're good they're that will admit they're a little on the spicier side but with but with it, they, the, the flavors are so complex and they just kind of come together nicely that you forget your eating. One of the things we had at the restaurants, people were like, I don't eat Cajun food because it's too spicy. I'm like, just try our food. Without fail, they'd be like, I don't eat spicy food, but I can't stop eating this stuff. That's kind of that how our good. stuff is designed. That's a pretty so. uh, strong endorsement there. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm gonna, I don't have a, a temp. To, we're going we're gonna to go with that. So basically, once it's risen, you get around 300 degrees. Um, and while that's heating up, too, yep. just a reminder, guys, you know, we have the bundles. Um, for our Facebook Live viewers today, uh, just click on the link on the side of the video here. They start around $8.99. You can get some of the rubs. You can get the all-purpose seasoning. We have the premixes for the Hush Puppies. All of those are available. Um, and uh, yeah, just want to make sure that you guys take advantage of that uh, sort of advanced screening that we're having for you all. Ooh, it looks like it's already starting close. to... Yeah, yeah. A little test drop. So obviously, the really good way to do this is you have like an ice cream scoop. Yep. Or, or like a rice scoop, just and you just pop them in there. Yep. We're gonna use melon this baller. Though. Yeah, yeah. So these are, you want to get like ball, you know, ball size, however size you want. You can use a tablespoon of it. You can use, you know, like I'm doing kind of big ones. Um, so these won't be as pretty, but if you want, like, if you're going for pretty. Yeah, if you're going for super, the aesthetic appeal, yeah, ice cream I, scoop again, would be Again, I'm Cajun. I don't go, you know, I just want to <laughs> eat it. I want the good stuff. I don't care what it looks like. Dive in, get that, that delicious little hush puppy going. That's right. Cool. And these take about, um, you want to watch them, especially if you are not, you, you know, we don't know the temp here. So you, what you want to do here is just make sure, you just want to make sure that you're, that they're golden brown. So they take about two to three minutes roughly. Okay. Um, so we'll, we, you know, we'll let them go for a little bit and then we'll flip them and, and then they'll be, they'll be ready to roll. We should see that nice little crunchy brown Nice exterior. crunchy golden brown. Yep. 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 Um, sweet. And yeah, if you guys are uh, interested or want to, uh, share maybe some of the recipes and tips and tricks that you've learned, we've learned from Chris today. Uh, remember to tag a friend and you never know, there might be a little surprise in that for you. Um, yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the beauties about you know, the, the size that we created, so these are one pound bags, so this, this makes a lot of food, right? It seems like it would, yes. Um, same thing with the, with the cans, they're eight ounce cans. Okay. Um, they're designed to have multiple uses. So an average household is gonna use about one to two tablespoons, or I'm sorry, one to two ounces uh, per meal. Um, of that's the spices on the, on the lighter like side. I'm okay. a heavy user, so I go through a lot faster. But but of the spices, so you can cook like a lot of meals out of these cans. <laughs> yeah. You get a lot of cooking out of it. We've already kind of talked about a couple of different options you can do with it too. Like it's not just you know in the mac and cheese. You Correct. can do it on on meats. However or you use salt and pepper, like for the all purpose in specific. However sure. you you use salt and pepper, you can use this in its place. You know, one of my favorite things to do is uh, sweet potato fries. I kind of oh. moved over to. You know, sweet potatoes as my kind of like staple uh, fry combo there. Seems like this would be a pretty good uh, 
a way to finish those off. Oh, definitely. We have a ton of people who use it on fries. In fact, I was telling you earlier, we have, uh, we have restaurants who use our products. Um, and one in particular recently was using the all-purpose on their fries uh, as a way to kind of spice sure. it up. He tried changing it <laughs> to a, uh, another one, and customers complained, right? Within a week, <laughs> um, they noticed. They could tell. They noticed the difference, um, and, and basically he called me. He's like, is there any way you can give me some today? And I was like, well, I can get you some today because he's a local guy. So I was able sure. to give it to him. But yeah, French fries, phenomenal one. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just one of my favorite little snack. You know, making burgers, we're grill. I always do it with the the salt or sweet potato fries. Sweet there. potato fries. Yeah, yeah. it's I'll tell you that these these are just. I'm gonna grab that plate over there from you. Sure. Because these are pretty much. You don't want to just grab one of those with your bare hands. I though? mean, you're a manly man. You can grab that <laughs> if you want to, but I am not. So basically, here you go. You just, you just yeah, want to make sure nice the golden, golden brown. And color. when you use, you know, we use because we're using a smaller skillet here. But when you use, you know, a, a full size skillet, they're going to be more of a, like a ball, um, especially if you're using like a, a melon baller yep. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. They'll come out. Like I said, I'm Cajun. I don't care how it looks. I just want it to taste good. Yeah, <laughs> they do look delicious. Yeah, so we'll let those cool for here. a little bit. Cool. Yeah, don't, don't bite, don't into, bite the, into the hot oil. Yeah, make it pretty like like a real chef, right? Let's put look at that. that. Boom. Finish it with a little. Green I don't have onion. any parsley or anything, but yeah. I, would, I would normally throw it in there. Awesome. So basically, yeah, I mean, you got starters right there. We use those as appetizers a lot. You can use them as side dishes. Uh, we've got main dish here that you could, or base that you could use in a multitude of ways. Um, yeah, and, you know, what we did four ingredients basically. And we've got, an, like you said, there's a kind of a variety of uses, a variety of different flavors that you can do. I'm really interested in trying that mesquite barbecue now. Mesquite you know, barbecue. that stuff always good. Um, so if you guys are interested in you know, trying some of these, taking them home with you, we have, uh, again, the bundles are on sale right now in advance for you guys on uh, our Facebook followers. Just check out the link on the side of the video. Bundles are starting at $8.99. Um, yeah, Chris, anything else you'd like to you know, mention to our, our fans today? Yeah, don't be scared that it's Cajun. That's one of the things that, uh, you know, Cajun has a stigma behind it. That's spicy stuff. This is not spicy. Think. Think about your, you know, your aunt, your uncle, who's like, oh, New Orleans food. Like, I've got to have it. I've got to have it. We've done that for you in a can. That's awesome. If you want it spicy, it can be spicy, but you're really just going to get the complexity. It's a flavorful. It's a that's flavorful. That's what you're going for. I like to say for those who are a little more spice adverse, like if you want it spicy, our blends are spicy with purpose. Um, there's a difference between biting into jalapeno sure. and making your dish spicy with our, our seasoning. Like you're going to get a complex flavor profile that will offset the spiciness that you might catch from it versus, you know, jalapeno where you just, it's hot. It's just right there. It's right there. Yep. So spice with purpose. Cool. Uh, so thanks again for tuning in, everybody. I, again, my name is Ben. This is Chris Fontenot from the Cajun Life. Um, yeah. Happy cooking. And if you guys, you know, maybe you have your own. Uh, favorite recipes that you want to share with us so don't be afraid to add the comments to the video uh, thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you guys again thanks